Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 28 of Daryl20's Let's Play of Minecraft 1.21, uh, where today I'm checking on my farms. Uh, hey, cows are doing good. Just gotta, gotta refill the wheat every now and then. Not the end of the world, mind you. Um, but yeah, like, it's something you gotta do uh, to, to keep this thing rolling. But as you can see, doing pretty good. A lot of, a lot of beef, a lot of leather. Uh, might wind up even smelting a little bit of it. Bring it home, smelt it up, throw it in the backpack, never have to eat again. I'm cool with that. Well, never is a strong word. Won't have to eat again for a while. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, uh, last episode we set up that whole farm. Now we have tons of wool, which means we should have no problem getting a whole bunch of smart cable. So, what I'm going to do today is make sure that we can get uh, as much smart cable as we can. And it's probably getting close to the point where I'm going to want to automate a little bit more uh, with some stuff. But we'll we'll get that thing handled in a minute. For now, let's make sure that uh, I have a slot in my backpack to memorize steak. That should be cool. And then I'll throw this extra steak in the AE system so I have it for later. Um, you can hear some sizzling happen because I... Uh, I went ahead and, and refueled my void flame coal fuel stuff, right? And uh, now we are uh, recrafting another backlog of this stuff. So we've got about, you know, 30 some buckets that we have to craft. I also threw some coal in here to start producing more um, of the compacted coal stuff. So yeah, Goo is doing his job. The whole automation here, by the way, working really beautifully. Very, very pleased with it. So with that said, let's now focus on getting, um, you know, everything we need. So first off, I should have a bunch of charge surges here that I made, and I'm going to get a bunch of redstone and a bunch of quartz, okay? And we'll combine these three, turn off our magnet for a sec. I said off. And boom, boom, boom. That should be cool. You're going to make a bunch of good stuff. And flux crystals. Nice. And then we can get some more cables. Cool. Uh, and then these cables can be uh, added to wool, which we have a ton of now. Uh, and then these can be added to redstone and glowstone to get a bunch of smart Bluex cables. Awesome. Uh, now, the other thing we're probably going to want to look at doing is getting a few dense cables. Um, and the reason we want that is dense cables can hold up to uh, 32 channels. Uh, and each side of the ME controller can also handle 32 channels. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is make sure I have a wrench ready and we can start like removing some of this stuff. And we can run dense cables over here. And for now I'll go this route, okay? And when I, when I get to this point is where I'm gonna put my last dense cable, if I may. Okay, and I'm gonna break you and break you. And then you guys can be regular cables. Boom. And boom. Okay. So now we can kind of see the differentiation here, right? So we've got we've got five channels in use, three of them going up in that direction, and two of them going off that way. Which means I can put five more devices up there before I run out of channels on this line. Um, and I can put six more over here. So like the dense cables give me a lot more channel capability, right? Um, and in total, we have six here. So this guy is connecting nicely, which is cool, right? Only one channel going down to access my wireless access point. And then for you, for now, only because I don't have the resources really, well, I mean, I kind of do, but like also kind of don't, I'm going to make sure that this guy just has some nice looking uh, cables as well. Cool. So now we've kind of outlined our cables and channel usage. Let's talk about auto crafting. So in order to auto craft, we're going to need quite a few things. Uh, we're going to need some crafting storage. So crafting storage allows you to auto craft a certain number of things. Every auto craft operation takes up a certain amount of memory in the AE system. And if you don't have any crafting storage, you don't have any memory. So without crafting storage, you can't auto craft. So step one is you need to do this. And basically each auto crafting operation is going to use up one of these while it's running. So if you want to be able to auto craft two different things at the same time, you need two of these. And if you want to be able to auto craft four different things at the same time, you need four of these. And the more complex your recipe, the more memory you need. So a 4K is like a good entry point because it's kind of like the... You know, it's enough to craft a few basic things, but if you want to craft like something that requires a lot of different steps, it's going to take more memory. 
So we're going to want to, you know, probably start off with like, uh, I guess we'll start with fish that. We'll start with two of them. Does that sound cool? I think that sounds cool. Not a bad start. And we might need to, oh, do I not have any sand? Do I not have any sand at all? That's actually kind of hilarious. I'm going to have to go get some sand. Luckily, uh, I can now hammer five by five. Now I do want my magnet on. Definitely gonna have to like get more sand at some point. That should be a good starter point. Whoosh. So sand go away and glass please. Look good. Okay. So another sort of glass and we're cool. Okay. So this is what's required. We're going to definitely need more logic processors. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and how am I for silicon? I do have some of those and redstone, some of that. That should be cool. I'm gonna go ahead and do a lot of this crafting off camera. Um, but while I'm uh, while I'm here, I will just fill you in on um, everything and how it works. Okay. Um, and I might want more acceleration cards just to make my life a little bit easier. I could probably do that, right? Yeah. Let's get some of those. A few more acceleration cards, only because. I do not want to not have acceleration cards. Cool, so I can do boop, 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 boop. Because I am impatient and I don't want slow, I want fast, okay? Um, so we'll talk about this real quick. So that's gonna be used for crafting, okay? And then I'll craft all the other stuff and then tell you what they are. How's that? I like that plan. Yeah, so we'll come back in a minute. So um, got this all done, and as I was doing this, I remember there was something I wanted to tell you guys I had to fix between episodes. Um, I noticed that my energy transmitters got into a kind of a loop, and it happened once the energy uh, in this cable uh, got to a certain threshold, and I will tell you what happened. What is... Oh, you're doing... Right off, please. Cool. Uh, everybody away. Thank you. Um, so basically what happened is... Uh, the energy transmitter was transmitting energy from itself into this power cable, which is why there's a filter on this. So what I did is I deny listed power cables on the energy transmitter, which means he can no longer send energy into this transmitter cable, um, which is a good thing to do if you're going to be hooking up power to the energy transmitters via a cable like that. Okay. Um, so now I think I've got most of what I need. I think. Um, so for this, uh, what I'm thinking I'm going to do, speaking of power, uh, I think what I'm going to do is ender gate this. So if I wanted to, instead of having this long cable here, I could just ender gate this guy, couldn't I? I'm going to say yes, but first I'm going to make sure that we blacklist the ender gate so that the ender gate also doesn't receive power from the energy guy, right? Um, but I have to add, see how it's happening, like there, it's happening right now. So this guy is actually trying to charge the ender gate, which we, we don't want to have happen, right? So let's add that. Because, like, the energy transmitters have no idea what these things are. All they know is that it receives forge energy, right? So I'm going to, like, send forge energy. Cool. Um, so now if I attach this guy, it's no longer a problem. And they're doing the thing, right? So, like, yeah. Make sure that if you're attaching like cables or anything like it to the energy transmitters, you block them from receiving power from the energy transmitters. Cool. But with that said, I can now um, Kind of remove all this cabling, which will be nice. Whoops, I don't want to remove that thing. There we go. Cool. Awesome. 
All right, uh, so I want some more Certus glass because that's going to be an important step here in a minute. So I definitely want molecular assemblers, which again needs a couple of you. So let me get like a few of these. What was this? Gold? I'm gonna need more gold processors? Okay. Always need more resources, which is why I'm getting into the auto crafting, because I want to be able to auto craft all this stuff. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Cool. Okay, so that was you that we needed to do. Whoops. And then I should get six of these. Oh, I'm gonna need more iron. Again with the iron? Again with the, I need to start automating my resource processing. We'll get there, I promise, we'll get there. Yeah, two's enough for now, we'll get more in a bit. Okay, and then we have pattern providers, right? Yeah, I want a couple of those. Those are going to be even more important. Nice. All right, I think I've got everything I need. So the first thing we want to set up here um, is I want to run some more cabling. And we're going to attach a pattern um, encoding terminal and a pattern access terminal, right? And while we're at it, we can facade these things up and we can put it there and there. And if we put a facade here, it'll cover that up as well, which is awesome. Now the pattern encoding terminal is where you teach the AE system how to make stuff. Um, so it's really pretty straightforward. Uh, first, you're gonna need blank patterns, which are made like so, okay? And once you've got those blank patterns, you put them in the pattern access terminal and then you can set things, right? So like a real simple pattern um, that I like to make initially is um, to make more stuff for auto crafting purposes. And the pattern provider is an important step, right? So what we do is we say, hey, in order to make a pattern provider, you're gonna need all these things. And you just hit that down arrow to encode it. Um, now, in order to make these things, we also need to know how to make formation cores. Um, and then we're also gonna need to know how to make annihilation cores. And we're also gonna have to know how to make crafting tables and in order to make the annihilation cores and formation cores we're gonna have to know how to make this stuff which we'll get around to figuring out how to make in a bit but for now we've got you know a couple things we know how to auto craft so the assembly of this is really pretty simple um, first off we're gonna to need to place down I did wind up going with four crafting storages um, and again I'm a little bit light on you know on this whole thing so I don't know if I got enough cables here really but we'll do our best um, so what I'm going to do is just temporarily run this over and then we're going to have a better kind of a setup probably in a bit. Okay. Um, but to set this up, what we're going to want is basically one and then a cable and then two. And I, and I can already tell I'm going to need more cables. Be one. Two sets of you, that, that, all right, that's a lot better now. And then I'll usually put like another here. And then once we get the ability to spread out more, we'll be better. But now we've got the opportunity to do four different crafting operations at the same time. And that's using up four channels, keep that in mind, okay? And then coming off of here, we're going to want a molecular assembler. And what this is, is basically an automated crafting table that you can feed recipes into. So I'm going to attach, now that doesn't require a channel. So see how it's using zero channels here? Because that really only needs power because we don't actually do any like logic in this. The logic is from the pattern providers. And when we attach that, the network will flow through the assembler into the pattern provider. So now we're using one channel. And if I put another one on this side, we're using two channels. I put another one on this side, we're using three channels. Cool. Um, and then we can put our patterns inside these pattern providers. So the pattern providers have room for, for, for nine of these. Okay. Um, now there is extended pattern providers, which are cool, and we'll get into later. Cool. Uh, but the extended pattern provider will store more patterns in them, which are super cool. 
and Dyer is a big fan, what can I say? So now that this molecular assembler has these pattern providers on it, we have the ability to auto craft these things. So for example, if I came over here and said I wanted a crafting table, I can click on that and say, hey, give me like four of those. And it'll say, all right, you've got the oak planks you need, so I'm gonna be able to craft those, no problem. And I hit start and you'll see it's crafting them. Cool, and then there's my four crafting tables ready to roll. So that's the very basics of setting up a pattern system. Uh, now this terminal over here, the pattern access terminal, gives you access to all your pattern providers. So remember, we placed down three of them, right? And each one had a row of nine slots available. So this pattern provider, these are the four that I put in there. So for example, I can remotely now access this pattern provider and move patterns in and out of it. So instead of having to go to where the pattern provider is and insert patterns, I can remotely do that, which is awesome. Um, so what I'm going to do now is kind of um, plan for uh, auto crafting all of this stuff. In addition, I'd like to auto craft over here and these guys. But before I get into that too much, I'm suspecting I'm going to need more Certus forts, I think. Um, so let's review how we get Certus dust again. Uh, I can get it with Zycraft extractors from flawless budding Certus quartz. So I could go that route. That's interesting. It's interesting. This UI is very confusing. I don't know how it works. But it looks like, okay, it looks like I could maybe do that. That could work. Should we check this thing out from Zycraft today? Alternatively, we can break the buds. Alternatively, we can crush with the inscriber. Alternatively, crusher, crusher, crusher. Okay, so I'm thinking my options are Zycraft extractor to get just dust or we auto harvest the certus quartz and get um and crush it in the inscriber right um i'm thinking we're, we're gonna want to at least get some regular quartz crystal here so um i'm gonna do the zycraft one and a block breaker from just dire things to get these things cruising. Is that cool? I think that's cool. I think that's what we're gonna do. So let's check out this extractor from Zycraft because I don't entirely know how it works. Um, I'm guessing the water can be on the side or behind it, or you can water log the extractor itself to get this. So let's figure that out. So step one would be to make this extractor from Zycraft. So we're gonna need some aluminum um, we're going to need pointed gypsum and we're going to need an item port, which also needs some aluminum. So luckily, I've got some aluminum. Uh, we're also going to need a piston here. And that should be cool. And then by way of buckets, hello, Sink. Good to see you. So let's see how this thing actually plays out because I don't know, like I said. And we're gonna have to like move this thing again, um, but that's also not a big deal, right? So you're gonna be here, but we wanna put there first and then that. Looks like it's working because it says it's got one. And then can I just put a chest on here? Is that how that works? Says it'll make it every 15 seconds. Oh yeah, look at that. That's cool. Okay. That's 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 one way to get Sirtis Quartz dust. That's cool. Slowly but surely. I mean it's not fast, but it's probably faster than without uh the energy acceptors, right? The growth acceptors. So it's not bad. Okay, I like that. Yeah, uh, that's cool. I'm okay with that. So we probably want that bit. And then the rest can be harvested by a Just Dire Things pickaxe. I like that. So here's how we're going to set this up. You ready? Uh, I'm going to get uh, a breaker, uh, but we're going to turn our simple block breaker into an advanced one. One, two, three, boop, 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 and we should be cool. Uh, and then we're gonna want a cut and paste gadget in cut mode. Good to go, okay, and cut that dude. Cool. Now where should we put this thing? 
Do we want like a new basement or do we want a new hole in the wall? Mm. New hole in the wall sounds kind of fun to me. Just saying. But new basement also sounds fun. Let's hole in the wall then. Um, because I don't think we need a huge amount of space for this. Am I correct on that front? I think that's accurate. Do we have any stone that I can fill that in with? Yes. Good, because I didn't quite mean... Okay, cool. So let's have um, this guy sit here, right? Uh, and then it'll go all the way around, and then we'll have the thing on top, and that should be cool. I'm good with that. And what we'll have, we have a drawer for Certus Quartz, but I don't think we yet have a drawer for Dust. Um, so should we have like a two by two drawer for Dust, or should we have a one by one drawer for Dust is really the question. I think a two by two drawer for dust would be cool. Um, so I could throw you down here and not feel bad about that. I'm on board with that. Um, and from functional storage, I want some void upgrades definitely for that because we're going to be automating it. And let's definitely make sure this guy is getting void upgraded. Is that cool? Yeah. Because whenever you automate something, especially something like this that you're like constantly making it, you want to make sure that you're void upgrading because what will happen is without a void upgrade, once this drawer fills up, it'll start putting it in your disks. And when it's going into the disks, it's taking up space. You don't want that to happen. So make sure to void upgrade if you're going to if you're going to have that happening. OK, um, so here's what I'm thinking. Right. This might get clever. I like this idea. I have a fun idea and I and, and I want to do it and we're going to see how it works out. OK, so real quick, I'm just going to put down some stuff that we don't need. Uh, you can go away, you can go away. I think I'm gonna backpack you. Uh, and I like the idea of you being memoried. Okay. Um, I'm gonna need you in a minute. You can all go away, backpack, backpack, go away. And all of this go away. And you should also be a backpack slot. That's memoried. Cool. And I don't think I need this chest. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm going to use um, an interface from Applied Energistics for this to sit in, okay? So what's going to happen is, first, let's put down this guy. Boom, okay? Um, and that's a little bit, but that's okay. We can, we can handle. We can handle being a little bit. Okay. So the interface is going to sit here. Cool. Um... And then we'll have, actually, let's do it this way. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I still had hammer mode on. Did that kill my Certus Quartz flawlessness? Yeah, it's flawed now. All right, I know where there's another one, so I'm going to go get it. That's on me. That was my mistake. That's Dyer being a derp. Is this where I got the flawed from, or the flawless? There's a flawless in here, right? Yes, flawless. Budding Certus Quartz. Yep. Gotta be more careful, Dyer. Maybe I won't place it until... Yeah, I'm not gonna place it until, like, we're ready, ready. Is that cool? Okay. So, um... Actually, no. I want the blocks around here because that's where the water is going to be, right? Okay. So you're going to get the extractor with water in it, and that'll be cool. Okay. And then this dude can paste right there. Okay. Let's make sure hammer mode is like definitely off for now, just in case. Cool. So now above here, we're going to have the interface. So you should be starting to get Certus Quartz dust. Beautiful. Cool. I like it. Now 
um, we're going to set up a lock breaker. Okay. And you're going to be here and you will be allow list and you're only going to break stuff that's going to drop Certus Quartz items. So the filter on the advanced block breaker can go between block or item mode. So if it were in block mode, you could put like the Certus Quartz cluster. Okay. If it were in item mode, you can put the Certus Quartz crystal. So in item mode, it's, it's filtering on what item you get when you break the block. Um, so, I mean, we could put it in block mode with the Surtis Quartz cluster. I think that's fine. Now, the other thing I want to do is make another one of these. Okay. Uh, are you out of power? You must be. Oh, ho, look at that. Boy, oh boy, we're going to need more coal. I'm going to have to deal with more. Another fuel source or more coal at some point soon. Okay, um, but what I want to get is a drops teleporter. And this should be a fun way to make things work, right? So if I get a drops teleporter, one, two, and then a blank upgrade, and we install this on this new pickaxe that I just made, I should be able to come down here now and bind it to this inventory. Or not this inventory, this inventory. Okay. So now when I put the pickaxe in here, cool. Um, it will it will do thing. And I'm cool with it doing thing. Okay. Um, so let's set the area. We're gonna say it's gonna be here, but plus each on the X. So it'll do all around it. And then I'm gonna put at least for now one energy growth accelerator here. Now this guy and this guy both require uh, energy. So a couple things we could do to facilitate that. Uh, we could have some cables. Now, if I remember correctly, there's like a rotation that I have to do here, right? So that's probably the way we need to go. And you're gonna go like that. And then we can power this dude. Does that sound cool? So you're going to connect up to that and now you should be getting power and you should be growth accelerating and you should only be breaking items that are Certus Quartz clusters that are fully grown. Meanwhile, you're constantly producing Certus Quartz dust. And when you do break your Certus Quartz cluster, your drops teleporter should immediately teleport the drop that's broken into this ME interface. Is that cool? That's kind of cool. You're gonna have to let me know what you think, but I feel like that's cool. And no need for hammer or any of the other stuff. Oh, we broke something. And oh, the Certus Quartz Crystal went into the Emmy interface. Oh, that is cool. How cool is that? Is that cool? I feel like that's like super duper cool. So no need for an item collector. In fairness, we could do the same thing right here. I'm just saying. I like that. I like that a lot. So now we're getting both, right? And now all I need to do um, is, is run some cabling over here to ensure that that's connected. Okay. Um, so then we get cable. Okay. And we'll do a better cabling job. I'm purposely doing like a mediocre cabling job. A, because I don't have a ton of cables yet. And B, because we're going to like do a deep dive into cables and channels and P2P networks after I give everybody like the basics and simples of cables. So fully aware this cabling job is awful. Remember, the Dire 20 Let's Play series is designed to teach people how to play mods that ain't never played mods before. So I know many of my viewers have done this before. I know you know what P2P channels are. A lot of, I'm, I'm expecting that there's at least a subset of viewers right now who have no idea what a P2P is. And, and I will be teaching that to you in the future. Okay, we'll get there. 
But now if we look, we'll see we have all these cool cables coming in. How cool is that? I love it. Uh, I really, really actually do love it. It's super cool. Um, I wouldn't mind some kind of like glass pane. Like, could I put a glass pane here without much problem? Let's find out. Like, can I do this? Yes, that's cool. And then you can stop rendering. And if I wanted to, I could put glass panes in the corner, maybe? Would that look cooler? I think that looks kind of neat, right? I like that. Is there a clear glass in this pack yet? Any mods updated with like clear? There's all kinds of stuff. Clear leaded glass from Chipped. Look at all the cool glasses. Look at all that. Is like glass essential in here yet? I don't know. There's Zycraft glasses. We could look at those. Dire glass viewer. Dire glass viewer. It's a stone cutter. Are there glass panes, though? Because I really kind of wanted, like, panes. Okay, maybe not. It's alright. We'll be cool. I think that looks neat. Neat enough. Alright, so that's that's automated service quartz. Is good? I think so. Uh, fuzzy mode... I'm really hard to make sure I don't accidentally click on the Certus dude. That's not terrible. Yeah? I like that. I think that's cool. I'm on board. I think that works. Right? And drops teleporter and machine charging. Celeste gem pickaxe, and like everybody's cool. Did I somehow lose my Ender Gate on this? I did. Fixed. Power good. Everybody happy. And growing fast. Nice. Okay, that's cool. All right, so I'm gonna call that wrapping up point because it's about that time. Oh, and you, my friend, are out of what? Chorus root? Hooray. Uh, we'll wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time. Uh, we'll uh, continue getting into more advanced AE type topics, including making sure uh, that we have plenty of Certus for all the things we're about to have to do. So what I'm going to do next time is expand this kind of setup to have a more advanced uh, capabilities. And in addition, we're going to want to start automating things that aren't a regular crafting table, like these uh, recipes over here. So there'll definitely be some stuff. Like I said, I'm going to try to avoid laser I.O. on this one because I've done that a lot in the past. So like, let's try with uh, the modern uh, modern pipe stuff to do to do some of that. Does that sound cool? All right, for now, Dalton, I sign off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, lots more automation and fun stuff to come. For now, take it easy.